all doing this morning? You're good? Good for you. Brilliant. Well, at least it's nice and sunny. It's not raining. It's really warm. It's the best day ever to wear a t-shirt, right? So, this morning what I'm going to talk to you about is about how you're all being tracked, okay? So some of you probably know a little bit about this, some of you maybe not so much. I'm going to show you lots of data on yourself, um, on the kinds of things you're being tracked through, who you're being tracked by, including me, potentially. Um, and so we'll talk about that for about 25 minutes. So um, before I do that, I'll introduce myself and tell you who I actually am and why I speak properly. And you guys all speak with weird accents, OK? So that was a joke you're allowed to laugh. OK, so two or, th two or three, you got the hint. So I'm originally from a place called Northern Ireland, which is the best country I've ever been born in. Um, and despite the fact that I look about 15, I'm actually a senior lecturer um, in something called health geography, right? So I'm really interested in how environment and people interact and how that relates to their health. So as we go through this talk, um, I'll show you kind of what the point of some of this stuff is and how it relates to your health, um, which is really quite cool, I think, anyway. So um, I also teach a lot of... Um, geography courses and a little bit of data science, um, some computer programming, stuff like that, big data. So if you um, manage to come to university um, at Canterbury and do geography, um, you'll probably get me teaching you in first year on something uh, um, human geography related, um, or some of the more specialist stuff in health geography, um, some of the big data stuff as well. So <coughs> let's go. Here is a quite a scary graphic. Um, or a really cool graphic, depending on your point of view. So this sort of technology already exists, by the way. It's a, a hologram that can be projected onto your arm. Um, so it's measuring your heart rate. Um, it's got a map on there that tells you where you are. If you don't know where you are already, because um, some of you may or may not know that. Um, and so this is the kind of technology um, that exists and that I use in research. Um, and it also exists in most of your phones. So put your hand up if you have a smartphone. Okay, that's, that's pretty scary if you look around the room. Um, put your hands up if you have an FPOS or a credit card. Okay, so you'll all have heaps of money to spend, right? You've probably got a bank balance of about a million bucks each. Yeah, yeah. You know, give or take, so between 10 and a million bucks. Okay. Um, and all these things people like me can use to find out where you've been and to track you around the place, um, which is really quite cool or incredibly scary if you don't want people um, to know where you've been. So I'm going to start by showing you um, why I think this stuff is actually valuable. So my argument is essentially that something like a smartphone, um, someone like me can actually use in a really useful way to improve people's health. Um, and that's what I'm going to show you. Here is what I think is actually one of the main points of um, contention of all this stuff, which is that um, whenever you sign up for a lot of things, so hands up if you have a Facebook, okay, other hand up if you have Instagram, and other hand up if you have Snapchat. Yeah, there you go, right? So um, you can see that a lot of you have signed up for these services. Um, if you actually read everything that it says about what they're doing with your data, it would take you about 76 days straight to sit down and read all that stuff, right? So who's ever downloaded an app and actually looked at the terms and conditions and scrolled through them all and read every single one, paragraph B, subsection three, schedule five, don't do this, we're gonna do that, sell this, all that stuff, right? So that's how long it takes if you read all that stuff, 76 days, okay? That's not really that practical because you have to do other stuff like go to school, um, maybe do some chores, I don't know, that kind of stuff. Or maybe you just want to spend time with friends. Here's what I have to do, which is really quite different as a researcher. I actually have to explain to people like you when I take their data what I'm actually going to do with it, okay? I have to explain to them um, what I'm going to do with it, where I'm going to keep it. Uh, if they don't want to be a part of that, I have to say, okay, you can come out of the study. I have to explain all these things simply. They're allowed to contact me. They're allowed to ask questions. 
um, which is really quite different from a long, long document which nobody ever reads. So if you think about some of the things that have happened in the media recently, um, you can see that um, there's problems when people don't really understand um, what's happening. So <coughs> that's the controversial bit um, of a lot of this stuff. What I'm going to show you then is all sorts of different types of data um, that is used for tracking um, and actually how it can be used both positively um, and to a certain extent negatively as well. So I'm going to show you some pictures of my mum and dad just because, because I kind of like my mum and dad. They're kind of quite cool really. You know? um, I'm also going to show you um, this using my colleague as an example. And then I'm going to show you my credit card data I'm not going to show you my credit card in case you go and buy something. Um, yeah, you, you wouldn't get very much, but anyway. Um, some of my social media data, um, which has been um, censored for swear words and all, all sorts of other stuff. Um, some search engine data, uh, and then what happens whenever I actually track myself all the time, everywhere, right? So here's a really, really simple example of what happens when you um, are tracked around the place. So. What you'll normally see um, if someone's doing this uh, to you is a map like this, right? So this is a city called Paris. Anyone ever heard of Paris? No? Nobody? A few of you have heard of Paris? Good. If you haven't heard of <laughs> Paris, I'm very, very worried, OK? So Paris, Paris is in France. And the big red splodge here is basically where I spent some time in Paris. So Unsurprisingly, I went to the Eiffel Tower whenever, whenever I was in Paris, right? That's not really that surprising. You could probably have predicted that. And what's happening um, is that this thing here inside your phone is the GPS chip. So that's like global positioning system satellites. It's working out where you are on the Earth's surface. Um, and also it has a thing in there called an accelerometer, which basically measures the, the shaking in the phone so it knows when you're moving. But this is, the, this is the actual data underneath that's being collected on you, OK? So what you can see is that I went on a specific street um, when I was in the Eiffel Tower. Um, you can also see that I went swimming in the River Seine. My lawyers have advised me not to talk about that anymore because it caused quite a lot of drama. That's a joke as well. Um, but what you can see is there's a big difference between the kind of aggregate and none of my stuff and the data that these people actually have in the background, OK? And they're not necessarily telling you um, what's happening. Then um, here's an example of what it's used for. So Kelly Dombrowski is a colleague of mine. Um, and so she bought this new tablet. I think it was an Android tablet. I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, it would have been an Android tablet if Google told her. And so <coughs> within a couple of days, because all this stuff of tracking is turned on by default, right? Who knows that, by the way? Who knows that all that stuff's turned on? Yeah, so a few of you, about half of you. Um, because all that stuff is turned on by default, within a couple of days, it's saying that it will take you 12 minutes to get to work if you cycle, 15 minutes if you walk, 10 minutes in the car, whatever it happens to be, right? And so what, what they are doing is using that, that kind of data in the background using a bit of a clever algorithm, and then trying to predict these things. So that's kind of useful, but also kind of scary that they do that without you really realizing um, that that's happening. So for you guys, that probably works quite well, right? Because you generally turn up at school on a weekday, maybe. No, not sure. OK, so you generally get there by about 11, t 10, 9, so something in there. And so there's a kind of, there's kind of a predictability to your routine, right? And so that's why this works. Um, if you're like me, you break this stuff reasonably easily because you do stupid things like travel all over the place, and it doesn't work quite as well. So you get some really exciting, interesting answers, um, which I'll show you, show you a little bit of. So that's what it's used for. Here's my credit card data, and this is taken from a place in Sweden, so I don't um, show you all the places I've been in Christchurch, because that may or may not be controversial. Um, and so, um, unsurprisingly, um, I've been to a train station when I arrived on the train. That's usually where trains end up, at a, at a train station. 
Um, if, they, if they don't end up in a train station, it means something's gone wrong. Um, yeah. So, uh, and then um, I stayed in a hotel as well because um, staying under a hedge is cheaper, but it's quite cold in Sweden. So I stayed in a hotel. Um, and then I went to a sports bar, to a supermarket, um, and to this restaurant, okay? But again, every time you make a financial transaction, especially if you're using your FPOS card, you can find out where that's been made, right? So you can get the address of the shop, and then you can start to plot a map of where you've been. So um, if you go into a mall, you can be tracked around that mall using both your smartphone and your credit card FPOS data as well. So I can see um, how much time you spent in Rebel Sport um, or whatever shop you've been into, okay? Now here's the, the classic one about social media, which is probably where you guys should be ahead of me, I reckon. Um, and so, hands up if you've ever checked in on Facebook. Ever, anywhere, okay. Um, what's really funny about this is you can actually make it up, right? Who knows that, yeah? So I, I for a joke for a while, I used to check into North Korea all the time. <laughs> um, and then because I travel so much, I kept getting stopped at airports and stuff. I was like, ah, I see, I see what's happening here. So even though it's really funny, it does have consequences. So um, as you can see, I arrived at an airport. So like a train, if a plane doesn't end up at an airport, um, what's happened there is that something's gone wrong, okay? Um, and so uh, the plane is meant to get to the airport, okay? Um, and then I've ended up at a hotel as well, which again is quite useful, but you already knew that from my credit card data. Um, I've ended up at this particular place where I actually did some work. That's a joke about being upside down. Not very funny, but makes the point. Um, and then this is watching Sweden lose 4-0 in a bar uh, in Sweden uh, against Ireland, which is kind of cool, but not really in that context. Um, so there you go. So that's Facebook, of course. Instagram does this as well, right? Because you can check it on Instagram, and it gives you that localized data. Um, or Snapchat did this as well, where, of course, you, know, you should know about this as well, that you're meant to hide that um, so people can't see where you are. So this is an Irish example, um, so it's not too controversial. But again, all that, all that location data is, is being used to find out where you are. Um, generally speaking, to sell you stuff, that's the idea. Um, most of the time. So um, here's a bit of a tangent. So this is my mum and dad here. See that? That's my dad uh, my mum. This is summer in Ireland. Um, so they've got their summer clothes on. Um, they've got double glazing um, and a really modern house um, as well. So this is, this is just normal Irish, Irish stuff. Um, and what I did which was actually um, slightly accidental, was that I gave them one of my phones and I forgot to turn all this stuff off. Um, and so I logged into, uh, if you write this down or you're really interested, you can go to this website if you have a Gmail account and you'll find out how much information Google has on you, right? Um, which again is quite scary. And so I accidentally left this stuff on um, when my mom and dad came to New Zealand. And what happened was that then my mum would ring me up and tell me where she'd been that day, right? And then before she told me the next place, I would tell her, ah, you're in, you're in Hamilton, weren't you? Yeah, you guys stopped at the toilet in Hamilton. Yeah. And then you went to, you went to Cambridge, didn't you? you? You've already told me that, haven't you? And so it kind of became a bit of a joke where I think she thought she was getting dementia it wasn't really that funny in the end, and I had to eventually explain that um, I'd left the thing on by accident, okay? But the point is that all that data is being collected, and they are completely unaware um, that I can actually follow them around a completely different country um, with relatively limited effort. And this is where it starts to get interesting for me as a researcher, because I can link this to all sorts of um, cool health stuff, not just public toilets, okay? One really useful bit of information that I personally find is that I really like burger fuel, and, so, and I also don't like queuing for food. So Google uses this data to tell you the best time to visit particular places, right? Has anyone ever seen this stuff before? Yeah, you guys have all seen this? So basically, 4 o'clock is a good time to get a burger from the Bush Inn 
um, burger fuel, okay? Possibly problematic if you have a job where you're meant to be working, and people know this, but anyway. So what I'm arguing is that we can actually use this to do much more useful health things or social things, like find out when it would be a good time to go see the doctor, um, find out when, when um, people have actually visited fast food outlets, when people have been to the pub when they shouldn't be, when people are spending way too long in gambling outlets doing the pokies. We can collect that information and use it um, for something really quite useful um, for health. Okay, how am I doing for time? Time in myself. Right. Probably telling slightly too many tangential jokes. Okay. So this is my Google um, data from about the past year. So each of those red spots is basically where I've been on the planet for about the past year. I think this may have been 2017. May or may not be some joke points in there. There are sort of the disguise, um, a few of the places I've been. Um, so um, this blue squiggly thing here is Google predicting where I've been in that place in Sweden. So again, it kind of picks out the train station, the hotel, and the business park. Right, So it, it knows where I've been. Um, the other bit is when I swam home from Sydney. Um, that took quite a while, to be fair. Um, and then uh, when I was in Afghanistan, um, yeah, yeah. Did North Korea, yeah, I was in North Korea as well. Obviously, um, they have um, Google services there. Um, some of these are real, some of these are fake. Um, but they, generally speaking, these New Zealand ones are all real, um, so I have and I'll show you uh, that that is actually true, <laughs> true in just a second. So if you don't want Google to, to do this to you, by the way, this, this thing here is what you need to press. So you need to um, turn that off uh, if you don't want them to know all that stuff. <coughs> so here's what happens if I actually track myself absolutely everywhere. And again, this is in Sweden, so it's not as controversial. And each of these circles is the amount of time I've spent in a particular place, in this, this place in Sweden. Um, Google doesn't get it 100% right, but it's pretty close comparing the blue squiggly map and this darker colored map as well. Um, so again, you get train station, hotel. Uh, one of these three is the pub, supermarket, restaurant. This is a university. This is a business park. And this is the hospital after the pub incident. Um, and so um, you can see that actually it does pick up a reasonable amount um, of the data. Google that is, and having it on all the time is not really that different. It's pretty good. So um, here's what it looks like then for me over an entire year in Christchurch. This is suitably anonymized, um, so that you can't really tell. Anyone out of interest know what that blue squiggle is? It's, it's me cycling. Shout out an answer if you think you know where that blue squiggle is. Anyone know out of interest? Who's got geographical imagination? McLean's Island, right? You win a mystery prize, which is the gratitude of everyone in the room. Well done. OK, um, so here's me cycling. Um, this is university. These two are university, where you are now. Um, so cycling to work, uh, walking to work. The good news story is that I normally make it to university. So if you don't make it to work uh, and you're employed at work, that's usually a problem, okay? like the train and the plane. Okay? Um, so I normally cycle up here and there. Um, what I find particularly comical is that um, this is me walking. So I used to park my car here, which is actually quite interesting because it's reasonably predictable. Um, this is obviously where the parking spaces were. If you wanted to steal my car, which you would have been welcome to, that would have been a good place to hit me. Yeah, and you would have got my car. Sold it because it was a European car, not cool. Okay, so um, and that's that's the kind of the the patterns that you can see over time. So what I'm basically doing in my research is taking this, but for about a hundred people, sixty people at a time, and joining that all together, and then relating that to the environment. So. Normally, we only have one spot in time, right, which is where you live. Um, but if I track you all the time, of course, that looks really quite different. So this is where um, I hypothetically live, uh, and this is where, where I actually move around um, New Zealand. So that's me swimming back from Sydney, um, flying to Sydney, all that sort of stuff. Okay. 
Then what I can do is link that to something like the environment and make that really um, relatable for health stuff, right? So these maps here, all six of them, are the air pollution in Christchurch, changing day by day, minute by minute. And so any time it gets to these darker colors, which is probably last night, potentially, because it was quite cold, um, you have a really big air pollution event. And so if you have a respiratory disease, you're in a bit of trouble there because you've got some serious air pollution. So what we can do is link it to something like this. And what matters here is that is if you move around the city, you're going to have different um, air pollution exposure. So um, what we've done uh, in some of our research is follow um, about 30 patients around places like Christchurch in Sweden. We've also done this to students, third year students at university, uh, and linked it to this kind of data. And what we can do is then relate that back to their health condition find out if there's lots of air pollution, does that muck up their health? Um, but instead of just using home address, we can find out if it's where they were before or after, not just home address, so when they're moving around. Um, and we can do that in almost real time. So what's quite cool about me tracking patients around is I know when they're in hospital before the doctor knows they're in hospital because it's real time tracking, um, which is really quite scary. Um, but also actually useful because then the doctor knows that they've arrived or are heading to the hospital um, using their smartphone. So this is kind of how it works. You flew around the city like this, um, and then your pollution essentially changes. So it moves from this kind of static, not really understanding what people's exposure is, to something like air pollution, to having a proper picture of all the environments you go through um, day by day. So if you think about a lot of the research we normally do, who's at home right now? Nobody lives here. Okay, or one of you lives here. Okay, so this is the key assumption that we're trying to change by tracking people is that actually you're not at home all the time and we need to track people around in some way, shape or form to better um, inform how we change um, behavior and understand how people's um, health is affected. Just before I wrap up, if you're interested in these kinds of skills, here are some jobs that I found with a quick Google. Um, so your normal geographer, these are taken from the United States, by the way, and then just turned into New Zealand dollars. If you're a geographer, just a pure geographer, um, average salary about 100 grand. That's not too bad, right? You know, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, some of you are laughing, some of you get the joke. Um, if you do the kind of mapping-y stuff, which is GIS, you can up that to about 116. If you do stats and GIS, you're up to about 163,000 on average. Um, and if you combine that with some of the programming-y type stuff um, that I do as well, you're up to about 170 grand, okay? So um, that's actually a reasonable amount of money, if you don't believe me. Um, it is a reasonable amount of money. Um, so this is the kind of jobs that you get if you do this kind of work. Um, so if you study geography, if you do GIS, um, mapping type stuff, that's the kind of jobs you could expect to get. You usually have to actually turn up to the job to get the money. Just remember, if you don't turn up, yeah, right, okay. Um, so um, that's the only caveat to that. That's pretty much... Um, all I have to say, what I thought might be kind of useful, fun, dangerous, scary, uh, random, is um, if you have Facebook or Instagram, right, check in or take a photo and put those two hashtags on it, just as a kind of proving the point that um, you're being tracked all the time and we can um, see what you think of this stuff, okay? So at some point, um, you're, you're allowed to take out your mobile phones and play with them now if you want. Um, so do this. There'll be a mystery prize, which is such a mystery, I've yet to decide what the mystery prize is. Okay? It may well be a map. So there you go. <laughs> all right, so thank you very much, guys. That's pretty much all from me.